There she is. Hey, long time no see. It's been a while. How have you guys been? Sorry. Awesome. How have you been? <laughs> Good. Busy. It looks like, yeah. it, it looks like it's 8 a.m. by you. Me? No, it's uh, it's six o'clock. The sun is just coming up in Vegas, so it's like you actually see it like on the wall, like because I'm facing kind of north-ish a little bit. It comes like super far in, so it's not bad at all. It's just like bright. Love it. How hey, are you? Guys? Amazing. Just um, just a quick heads up. Let's wait like five minutes to let a couple more people jump into the room so that they can catch. Totally. Conversation. For sure. Awesome. Margo, do you, I, this is like, I, when I look at you, I feel a little bit weird because I really do feel like my <laughs> feet are on your face and, and I'm like, <laughs> you guys okay. show us your faces. Show no, us your faces. So early. <laughs> Margo. So, so we have this show and it's called Espresso with Aaron and Sari. So we, we do have a little bit of a coffee culture. So I just want to ask you before we get started, are you a coffee drinker? Oh, I love coffee. What love coffee, coffee do you like? Right here. <laughs> What's in there? Just black coffee. I usually do um, a little bit of cinnamon. I'll put the cinnamon first and then I'll pour the coffee on it. So it kind of like mixes it up a little bit. But like I'll do iced coffee, I'll do black coffee or hot coffee, but I just I like it nice and like dark and strong. I need a strong coffee. You notice that efficiency? Like CrossFit is all about efficiency. She's like, if I pour the cinnamon on the top of the coffee, <laughs> it's just weird. It's way more efficient. That's so like, funny because I've done it before, like on the top. I'm like, it just kind of sits on the top. But if I put it on the bottom, then it kind of mixes with the coffee more. So so good. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Where, where are all our coffee drinkers at? Type in the chat box. What do you like to drink in the AM? Margo, I'm so stoked for this conversation. This one, this one is just going to be you and Sarit this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I just wanted oh, to say right. hi. Last time it was, it was you and her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You guys are going to have fun. I'm going to be over here creeping on the side. Okay. Good. Awesome. Good. Good to see your face. So Lauren, not much of a coffee drinker. Tiffany Hughes, coffee or tea. Um, Janelle and coffee. What about the rest of y'all? Oh, Crystal, water, water, water. I love it, amazing. That's awesome. Okay, Margo, are we ready to get this party started? Anybody else will join us later. We'll just catch up from where we are. Are we ready? Yep. Amazing. So give me just one second. Let me get set up. Y'all ready to do this? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to do this. I don't know how to do it. Amazing. Also, just so that Margo can see, type in the chat box. Where are y'all from? Oh, I assumed everyone was kind of from the same spot. Actually, I think there's some people from Scotland, England. That's so awesome. Bay Area, nice. North Carolina, Texas, Houston, Scotland, awesome. So cool. You guys are I like how Brogan said, uh, never drink coffee, but water or wine. I'm all about the wine. We warned them. Yep. One second. Oh, nice London as well. So cool. I love this. Okay, we ready to get this party started? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, good morning, everybody. Today we have with us a very special guest. Though we did have a lot of athletic people and some Olympic athletes, Margo, I think I can pronounce, I can announce by far that you are the most athletic woman that we've ever had on our show. You guys, She's a six times CrossFit Games athlete, a golfer, and as if that is not enough, she already decided to challenge, to challenge herself as well by also playing in the Rocks Titan Games recently. So though she climbed the top of the mountain in multiple athletic realms, she's now taking on a new venture and decided to follow her passion for wine by starting her own brand called the goat wine 
She is a true example of practicing what she preaches. And her slogan is hashtag work hard, wind down. Margo Alvarez, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me on. It's awesome to meet everyone. It's, it's really a pleasure. I know that like you're up to so many things and your time is extremely valuable. So this really means a lot to each and every one of us. So, you know, my first question to you is you're obviously up to a lot of things and you love challenges and, you know, throughout evolution, humans have evolved to stay in their comfort zone. Now, a lot of times we hear that, you know, if you're obsessed, like anything with the word obsessed has a really negative connotation. Now, mm -hmm. would you say that you're obsessed with overcoming life's challenges? And if so, how did it all start? It's interesting. It's instead of obsessed, obsessed, I think of the word kind of overcome um, or just really dedicated. I think that's another word that you could replace with obsessed. Cause like you said, there's that negative connotation, but I think it's, you're presented these challenges in life and it's up to you or the group that you're in, your environment that you're in, that's going to allow you to kind of overcome or kind of cross that hurdle or cross that mountain. And so I definitely would say I 100% I, I gravitate toward challenges and I 100% gravitate toward trying to overcome them. Um, and not always is it gonna be like a win or not always is it gonna be a deal that I secure but it's something that I know that if I work towards and if I at least give it my 100% effort and if I achieve it, great. If not, then it's like, at least I gave it my all versus wondering and thinking back like, man, I, I should have tried this or if I have any regrets. So I definitely would say I would venture down that way. <laughs> I love it. And have you always been this way or was it like a specific life event that, you know, kind of like got you to that point over time? I think I've always been geared towards challenging situations. I think I've always been like that, but I think when my sister. Uh oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm muting some people. My fault, my fault. Okay, uh, there she is, your sister. Yeah, so when my sister passed, I think it was something that kind of threw me more into fitness. Um, we were all really active as young kids and young girls. And I think that her passing, I wanted to honor her and I wanted to obviously have it continue her life and her legacy. But at the same time, I was kind of in a spot where I'm like, how do I deal with these emotions? How do I kind of forge fortitude and continue forward? And I think throwing myself into fitness was something that gave me a release, whether it was release of stress, release of emotions, if it created those endorphins, which we know exercise does, but I think it gave me an outlet to be able to kind of figure out where I was at life at a young age and kind of figure out how am I going to go forward. And it was kind of my solace in a way. And for me, like running is something I've always enjoyed. And I think that running gives me that, that peace of mind, whether you think of everything in the entire under the sun and in the world, when you run, or if you think of nothing, you just are out there in nature or on a treadmill or wherever you run. I think that was something that gave me um, kind of peace in my mind so that I could work through everything that happened. So is that how you initially got into fitness? You got into running? Yeah. So I'd started, I think this was, I'm trying to think like when, like I was always active in high school, did volleyball and golf. Uh, when I went to university, I did Hawaii, I went to at Hawaii Pacific University. I did outrigger canoe paddling and did that for about a year and a half, two years. But while I was over there, I, I was like, all right, you know, I want to stay active. And I felt like running was kind of the thing I could do anywhere. And so that's where I got in nothing. I'm trying to think like early 2000s. Um, and that continued on until I moved to the Bay Area in 2008. And so that was kind of my go-to. And then that running led to like Tough Mudders and Spartan races. And then eventually that led to um, CrossFit. And then eventually that obviously led to everything else in my life. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. So I want to point out something interesting. Um, it sounds as if to you, fitness is what I would call an anchor. And if you guys are taking notes, then you should probably write this down. So an anchor is anything that's some kind of activity that centers you regardless of what is going on around you. So I wanna do a quick recap and maybe I'll have some questions too. So um, your sister's passing, that's obviously a very traumatic effect, right? Um, and from what I know of you, you're 
very close with your family. Um, so you had to look for something to positively distract, distract you without um, you sabotaging yourself. And is that really what got you into running? You're like, I need to be in a good space. Um, yeah, I never, I don't, I don't think I ever thought of it like that. It could be. Um, I think it was something that it was more of a, um, like a release maybe of emotions, like maybe trying, maybe not knowing how to deal with emotions or maybe not knowing how to work through the situation. I've always had a positive mindset, always looking at the glass half full. And I think my sister was someone that always made the most of life. She was like, you know, enjoy each moment to its fullest, like have minimal regrets. And that's something that I, when she passed, it was like, not that it was a little more aware of it, but it was a little more on the forefront. So it's like, all right, what do I want to do today? That's going to help me. And I think you made a great point of like finding something that grounds you, that roots you like that anchor. It, and I've noticed to this day, if I get caught up in life or business or traveling, and it's like, and I don't work out for about a week, it's like, I start to feel anxious and stressed. And I think that that exercise is a, is a release where it's like, whatever I'm feeling on the inside, I get to physically do some sort of effort and get that out. And it could be hiking, could be running, could be classes. But I think that allows me to like extend or push out whatever I'm holding on the inside. And I think I tend to hold a lot of stuff in the inside, whether that's my body or my mind. And I think that allows me to get that out. Obviously talking about it is great as well, but physical effort, cause you put that sweat and that work, your body has to challenge itself. And I think that allows, allows me to do that. <clears throat> 100% and you know from my own experience I feel the same exact way and that's why you know you hear a lot in the female community you know the excuse making of I don't have time to work out I'm like you actually can't afford to not work out mm -hmm. um so it seems as if you've you've had a positive attitude for as long as you've known what has caused that is that like the way that you were brought up is that like did that come from your family that is not something very natural yeah i think it's something i've definitely been raised with with my mom she my mom is just a super loving individual um, she always gave time to myself and my sisters mm -hmm. and she, I, I'm just so grateful for her and how she brought us up because I think that's who I am today for sure. hundred percent. And, and I don't know. And it's interesting ever since a young age, I've always wanted to help people. I always like try to look at things in a positive manner. And I think it's definitely helped And it. It's hard because I think as you get older, you go through maybe more situations and more experiences where things aren't always like sun, sunshine and rainbows or peaches and cream. And you start to realize like, man, there's a lot more negativity or a lot of things. And if you don't see as a child or a young teenager, and I think that if you can see those things and process those things and still understand, all right, you know, there's not good everywhere. There is bad out there, but if you can continue to try to be that beacon of light as a positive manner for your environment or the community that you're around, then hopefully that can inspire others to hopefully be, a more of a positive manner and obviously it's a lot easier to think negative and it's like oh man like i didn't get this deal everybody sucks nobody wants the wine or no one's gonna do this and it, it's um it's a slippery slope sometimes i think with that negative thinking negative thinking but it's like if you can just take small steps each day as like a daily goal to say hey how can i put myself on a positive mindset how can i wake up on the good side of the bed as cliche as that sounds, it's something that we just take small things, or I take small things in my day, like, all right, take a moment to breathe, stop, and like, how can I take that spin for the positive? And it, again, it might be a little more effort, but in the long run, at the end of the day, you're like, cool, I feel better. Or at the end of the month, you're like, man, like, I'm, you're starting to feel that change, because it takes a while to make that change, not only physical, but like mental, mental change. 100%, you know, um, in our coaching programs, one thing that we always say, it, we talk about the importance of having a good attitude, because here's the thing, like, whether you release positive energy or negative energy, you're still expending the same amount of energy. So you might as well do something positive with it. You guys, I want to um, bring out a really important point that Margot touched upon. So it seems like, you know, you've been very fortunate in the sense that you've had great role models, um, you know, for your entire life. So you guys, the concept of role models, like who you surround yourself with shapes you, whether you like it or not. And really that is the purpose of our show. Okay. 
I can talk to you forever, but let's keep moving this forward. So tell us a little bit, how did you get introduced to the um, training methodology that you now train with? Um, because obviously your anchor started in the form of running and then you said sparring races and then with time you got introduced to CrossFit. So how did you get introduced to that? I had some friends that had told me about it and said, hey, you should check it out. You should try it. And I was, I was a little hesitant at first because I had just joined a UFC gym in the Bay Area. Um, it was in Concord, California. And I, I used to do Taekwondo when I was little. So I was, I was like, man, I really like to get back into the martial arts. And so I was interested into the submission, submission wrestling, BBJ. Um, and I was like, you know, I really want to focus on that. So I like, I didn't, I didn't try it. I didn't go to the classes. And so I waited for a few months. And I think that was for like four or five months. And I think it wasn't until early 2011. A friend was like, hey, like, I really want to go check it out. Do you want to go do? I was like, all right. I was like, I'll go check it out because everyone's been telling me about it. And I remember my first class was like snatches and burpees. And mm -hmm. I have, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a short thumb. So it's like, a little shorter. I do <laughs> see that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. <laughs> so my right thumb is a little shorter than my left thumb. So when I went in to go snatch, like trying to do the hook grip with a 45 pound bar was hard. I was like, man, this is really challenging. I was like, but I've never done snatches. So of course it's going to be hard. So I did that in burpees. And I just remember like breathing so hard, not knowing. I was like, man, what is this type of working out? But I just, I loved it. I thrived on that. I think because I for some reason, like I said, I gravitate to those challenging situations. So I immediately was hooked. I like signed up the next week, went and did um, like the on-ramp classes and then just threw myself into classes. I was still training for a half marathon. So I would do probably three to four days of CrossFit and then two to three days of running um, and just threw myself into it. And then that summer I had volunteered at the SoCal regionals and just seeing all those athletes out there. I remember seeing like Becca Voigt, Chris Clever, um, Katie Hogan and seeing them, I was like, man, they were lined up for the thruster, uh, the thruster ladder. And I was like, this is amazing. I was like, I want to do that. I want to see if I can do this. And I think, again, not being able to do any of that way, not really knowing the mechanics of, the, of what that all entailed, but I was like, I want to try it. I want to challenge myself. And then the month later going to the games and seeing the athletes at that level, I was like, whoa, I was like, I want to do that too. So I think in, in my mind, I just, I wanted to push myself as far as I want. And I was just talking about it last night to my husband, Alex and a friend. This was more about the business aspect with the wine, but you have that feeling or you have that, like, there's not a guarantee. There was no guarantee or like satisfaction of like, you are going to get to the games. But in my mindset, I was like, you know, I, I want to try this. I want to give it everything I got to see if I can get there. I didn't get there in 2012, but it continued. And then I got there in 2013. So I think, um, I know that was a little bit of a long and a little bit on a tangent, but I think that's oh, great. My, kind of like that introduction of like, you know, like not be forced into something, but just try it on your own. And that allowed me to kind of see the beauty of what I loved about it. Um, obviously the community was something that drew me in right away as well as the physical and mental challenge, because I love the camaraderie that everyone had and everyone was supporting one another. And I thought that was something that was like, man, this is really unique and different, but I loved it. Cause I think, yeah, it, in my heart and at my root, I want to help people. And that was a way to help people by coaching them and inspiring them to go after their goals. I love it. So, I mean, making it to the CrossFit games, not just one time, but six times um, is a big deal. So something that you said is, you know, when, when you volunteered at the regionals, you saw all the OGs, um, man, those are like the good old days of CrossFit. Yeah. Um, but you know, you were, in, you were inspired and you, the knowing the kind of person that you are, you're like, I'm up for the challenge. Like I want to do this too. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, you committed to, to training at a high level, but what, what does, you know, wanting to make it to the CrossFit games, like, is that something that you knew that you wanted to do from the beginning or did that just evolve because of your passion for the sport and the challenge and because of your dedication to anything that you put your mind into? I think when I, when I first found it, I was like, I just want to try it. I want to do it. I wasn't necessarily looking to compete because I didn't know anything about it. I joined the gym about like two weeks before the CrossFit Open in 2011. 
And people at the gym were like, you should sign up. And I think I already done competitions. I'd done some Tough Mudders. I'd done some Spartan races. I'd done some sort of like competition events. So I was like, oh, it's just another competition. Why not? Like, what do I have to lose? And I think doing it, it like, I, I clearly was competitive because I, it sparked that interest in like wanting to do good. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll make it to regionals, telling my family. <laughs> and obviously what, I didn't know the full scope of it, but like, that's where it's like that naivety in a way or that, that unknown I just didn't know. And I think that that innocence kind of allows you to not set barriers for yourself mentally and physically. Um, and so that was something that I just like, all right, I'll try it and didn't work out. That's okay. I had a great time. Six weeks of the open was great. Um, but then obviously as I got more involved, um, I think about a month into it, I took my mobility certification with Kelly Starrett down in San Diego. And I like, I was already a personal trainer beforehand and I had done personal training um, at a different gym. And I love that. And I, I wanted to get back into that in some sort. So I'd done marketing. I was a full-time marketing coordinator and I liked it. I love the marketing aspect of it. I love the creative aspect of it, but I was like, how do I want to make a full circle back into health and fitness? How can I help others, but also help myself? And so that's where that coaching role came in. And that's where my focus was at first was like, all right, I want to do this full-time coaching. But then I think I went to regionals and I saw that competitive aspect and it was, that was still in me. Like, even when I play cornhole, like I want to win. <laughs> and I think that's something that I like, I just, I like to have fun, but I also want to challenge myself and say, Hey, how good can I do something? Or how, how consistent can I be at something? Whether that's cornhole or exercise or the wine company. Um, but I think it's something that I just have always had in myself. And I don't know if that's being the first of three children that like they have the kind of like, Oh, if you're a first child, you have certain personality traits. But I think that's something that having that, push within myself drove me to want to compete. So I think it had kind of evolved over time versus it just like happening. And there are some people out there that they're like, I have no desire to compete. Don't have, want to have anything with it. They maybe competed in um, like a previous event or maybe previous years. Like I had some friends in Montana, they competed in like gymnastics at an elementary, junior high, high school level, maybe even collegiate level. And then now they're like, I don't want to do any competing because I've done enough of it. So I think I didn't have really have any of that. I didn't do collegiate sports. I did activities, um, club sports, did my own working out, but I didn't have anything where I competed besides what I had in high school. So I think maybe it was something I, I had inside me that I wanted to work on. And that gave me that platform to do that. I love it. You know, you, you used one word that I had to highlight and I'm going to mention, and that is the word consistency. And Margo, I think what makes you an elite human, there's elite athletes and there, and there is elite humans. And you're an elite athlete because you've proven consistency throughout different elements of life. And, you know, truthfully, that's why Erin and I love you. Um, and we don't get inspired. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, elite human. For the record, I want that. Thank for the you, <laughs> thank you so much. I, I I say things out of my mouth, and it's like it just comes through me. But you know, like you're an elite human because you're just so consistent in how you approach life. And you know, something that we always talk about in our coaching programs is the need to just push through and be consistent. What's going to make you rise above anything in life is consistency. And you guys like Margo is like a living example of that. She's so great at what she does because she's consistent. So that being said, I want to ask you a bit of a personal question. And that is, were you always really good at whatever you put your mind into? Or was it your consistency that got you better than most? It was for sure my consistency and it was that dedication to training to get better. Um, I will definitely say I'm, <clears throat> to me, I am not the most, when I first started CrossFit, I was not the most athletic individual. Um, I, for the record, I still am not really good at basketball. <laughs> That's a little challenging for me. So if we do a one-on-one -on -one basketball, you'll definitely probably be winning. Um, I love volleyball, but I think, uh, I think that consistency to train, that dedication to work hard, um, and just kind of persevere through that was something that I've, I think I would dedicate for sure what I've done in life. Um, for some reason, it just maybe certain things hasn't come naturally to me, but I, I've always had that, that will to say, Hey, like, how can I work hard to get what I want? And I know there's tons of people out there that have talent and maybe they don't have to put as much effort into it because they have that natural ability. 
and awesome, good for you. But I think there's something that comes in from putting in that work and that time to become talented or to become athletic or whatever it might be. It could be consistent in your job. It could be consistent at waking up every morning to like walk 10 minutes or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be one thing or the other. It could be spending time with your family every evening on the couch eating bonbons. Um, I think it's all about kind of finding something that you enjoy, you like, and then just creating that habit around that. I love it. Oh man, the power of consistency. We talk about it all the time. Oh, it's so powerful. It is. Okay, amazing. So, you know, what's beautiful about you is that like you continuously keep on evolving and you know, most humans are scared of change. You're like, bring it on, you embrace change. So now what principles from your athletic career have carried over to your entrepreneurial journey? A great question. Um, I think for sure the dedication and the patience, because within exercise and when training, you don't just automatically hit a PR every single day or you don't automatically hit your goal that you're working towards. So I think that patience in the gym and patience within the athletic endeavors have transferred over to the business where it takes a while to start a business. And you, you guys know, like there's a lot of intricacies that go into it. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't see. There's a lot of maybe failures or not successes that come each day that you have to say, Hey, it's okay. Like I can get that tomorrow. they will come next week. So I think that patience and, and that resilience to kind of continue forward in business, um, been told no plenty of times. We're not going to take your wine. Had to have, have had plenty of conversations where you kind of get into this routine of like, Hey, like if it happens, it happens. I'm going to continue to push for it. But if I don't get it, that's okay. That door maybe closes but then there's another door that I can open on the other side. So I think for sure that resilience to kind of continue and that patience to say, Hey, like not every day is it, it is it going to be like maybe a success, but you can find success within each day. And part of our motto with our wine company and just life in general is work hard, wine down. And we've also also said train, recover, drink wine, which is also an important part, but that work hard is very broad, which we want because we want to be able to tap into different uh, avenues or paths in life. And it's like, you work hard each day. There's going to be struggles, but embrace those. There's going to be successes, celebrate those. But at the end of the day, enjoy the process, enjoy the journey and see some sort of like positivity in each day. Cause over time, those will add up. And we spend so much more time in the journey and in the process compared to like reaching that goal or standing on that podium. Life is essentially the journey. And as cliche as that sounds, it's so true. Like we spend so much more in the daily working and a daily like celebration with people that it's like that's what we should remember and embrace because it's accumulation of those moments over time i know that this is a side question but do you think that as a society that's why oftentimes like alcohol is abused because of the approach that people have into it it's like you know they get to themselves to a point where they're so burnt out and then they're like I just like, I need something to like bring me down because I don't know how to do it myself instead of just like harmonizing a little by little each and every day. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's interesting. I, I can't obviously speak for everyone. Sure. Um, I've known individuals and people that obviously were alcoholics and they've been able, they, they've been clean or they've been off of it, off alcohol for many years. And I a hundred percent support them. I'm not saying that you have to drink wine. Like I've come across a lot of people and had a lot of friends that would help with the harvest in the past years that are Mormon and they don't drink. And I totally respect that. But I think it's, I think that mentality in society, sometimes it's like an all or nothing, which that can serve a purpose depending on how, how the individual is or how their kind of mindset is. But it's like, if you have a glass of wine or you have a little bit each day, that's great. But it's also good to find out like how can you work through things and cope things and i think that's where a lot of things aren't maybe discussed and talked about and i think that's where more discussion should be welcome and this is in all facets of life more discussions more communication because then allows you to talk through it and sometimes it's hard maybe those are hard discussions or they're challenging and you're like i don't know how to approach it but working through those emotions are great because then it won't result to like i need to take an edge off or i have to do this to equal something else and I mean, I, again, I can't speak to everyone, but I know like if you bottle certain situations up or you go through certain experiences and you don't work through them or you don't talk to them, then that bottling up adds up over time. And if multiple years have passed and you haven't worked through certain issues, then they might explode or they might, they might result in other kind of result in different actions. 
And so I think it's like, hey, like have a discussion, talk about it, like to take the edge off. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's like sitting and staring at the wall and not thinking of anything. And I think it's so easy, especially with TV these days, you can just be there and kind of be numb and have the TV go. And maybe that's their way to decompress. That's awesome. But it's also, I think, how do we work through emotions? And I love that you guys have this group where you talk and you discuss and you share because even if you're not actually physically talking, you're just listening. I think that listening is huge and it has such, can have such an impact in your life. And for me, I love learning other people's stories and hearing what people have gone through because we all have gone through something. We've all had experienced something. And some people might say, oh, well, mine's bigger than yours. It's like, we shouldn't be comparing it, right? We should just be say, hey, like, that's the, like awesome that you made it through that challenging event or like good for you for achieving this like let's support one another and help one another versus trying to divide and like saying oh mine's bigger than yours or whatever it is i think that community and that coming together is definitely something that's um could be used on a worldwide or nationwide basis and i agree with you 100 percent. and you know like that is why I'm, I'm so supportive of what you do because it, it, it just says a lot about how you approach life as a person. Because here's the thing, in the fitness industry, like you are told, right? Like mainstream fitness will tell you that, oh, you shouldn't drink alcohol if you are pursuing your goals, right? Yeah. And I mean, like you are a living example of, I mean, she has like a 10 pack. Like, I don't know where the other four came from. Like, it's not a six pack. It's like a 10 pack. <laughs> but, you know, like, like she's able to harmonize that. And it's so sad to see because, you know, people, people say that, oh, if I have goals, then I can't have a piece of chocolate or it, like the word can't too. It's like, no, like you have a choice. Like you're not told to do anything. Like you choose to do whatever you want, but you know, I, it's exactly like what you said, you know, um, basically society's teaching of like the all or nothing mindset. It's like, yeah. if you want to lose weight or if you want to optimize your body comp, um, you know, you need to abstain from that. It's like, no, you need to harmonize it and you need to follow a guideline yeah. that helps you to fit it in so that, you know, you are able to, you know, emotionally, mentally, and physically like do more each and every day. Um, so I love that. And I think that it's so unique. Um, you know, obviously you love wine. Otherwise, you won't have started this business. So now, can we talk a little bit about your routine? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really intrigued and I'm sure that you guys are too. Like here in front of us is like an extremely like fit, like possibly one of the healthiest women on earth. And like, you're like, oh, wow. Like for one, my question to you is how often do you drink wine? Pretty much every night. <laughs> I love it. And like you hear like saying that, you know, she, she drinks wine every night. And like, you know, for most people, if they're in the industry, oh, oh, I haven't drank wine in years. Yeah. Like, so like, tell us a little bit about your routine. Like, what does a day in the life of Margot looks like? What are your habits? That's, that's a great, great question. So it's, it's changed over the, I know. <laughs> it's changed over the years. <laughs> um, like when we were harvesting, definitely looks different than like what we're doing now. Obviously, we're not focused on that. We're, we're focusing more on like the marketing and business aspect, advertising, um, distribution now. So for a big part of it is getting up in the morning, um, making sure I set the intention. I've noticed I try to, at least in the morning, I try to have a little bit of quiet time when I get to drink my coffee. But at the same time, I'm kind of pairing that with a little bit of work. And usually that's like computer work. So I'll sit down and maybe do some stretching get on my computer, get on my phone, answer some emails, answer messages. Um, social media is, I love it because I can connect with people. It's also, there's also a negative where I can be a lot of, on there a lot and it pu pulls from other aspects, but I love connecting with people and that's the way that I can connect with the community around the world. And so I want to make sure I'm staying engaged with people. So I make sure in the morning I spend a little bit of time, like I said, on my phone or computer, drinking my coffee, stretching. Um, and then I, I, ha I have to set a time or a schedule to say, hey, I'm going to go to the gym at this time. Because if not, I will sit on my computer for 12 hours. And I've done this plenty of times where I sit there for 12 hours. I get tons of work done. But then I'm like, man, my back and hips are killing me because I haven't moved. And I mean, I've gone to the bathroom. Or I've gotten up and stretched. But I haven't done anything besides sit. And so I've had to create 
a time where I'm like, hey, I'm going to go and do class at the gym because I love the community. I'll do the classes. If I have time, I'll do a little extra training afterwards. And then after that, I'll come back to the house or go to the office and do more work. So a lot of it recently has revolved around the computer and the phone because we haven't really been able to do in-person events. If we're doing in-person events, then that could be physical tastings at like a retail shop or we'll travel and we'll do yoga and wine nights. Um, we've done a good handful within the California area, a handful in the like Nevada area, Reno and Las Vegas. And then we've obviously gone to like NorCal, done some there, San Diego, Arizona. We want to do more given the current situation with everything. We'll probably have to wait until later this fall or even next year. But most of my day is either computer work or phone work and obviously making sure that I'm engaged and I'm doing that. And then if I need to, just last week, I actually got to do some in-person tastings locally in Vegas with our sales rep. And so from time to time, and I'm trying to make it more of a, a more consistent basis with seeing my sales reps in Vegas so I can connect with them, talk to people about the wine, be in person. Cause a lot of people see the wine and that's great, but what's unique and different about me coming? It's like, well, I own the company, it's my wine, but I also want to establish a great relationship with people. And I want to help not only sell the wine, but also promote our message and create balance with people. Plus I love to be able to meet new people, uh, definitely a big intro or extrovert. So that's always a positive in being able to do that. Um, and that usually covers most of the day. <laughs> And then um, I'll usually, at the end of the day, I'll come home. And then if I'm going out with friends, if I'm going out with Alex, we'll go to a restaurant. We'll try to go to places where the wine's at so we can obviously promote the brand, promote the wine, but also kind of embrace our message of wine down and we'll have some glasses of wine. If we don't go out, then I'll stay home. I'll usually have maybe two glasses of, of night, maybe three, depending on the day. Um, but uh, I'll just try to like enjoy myself. And I, again, it's usually long days. I try to get up around depending on the day, six to six 30. And then by the end of the day, I'm usually falling asleep <laughs> like nine, nine 30. But sometimes if it's a later night, then I'll go to bed at 10, 10 30. But, uh, I, it's hard because I get, I like to jam a lot in a day, but I have to remind myself, Hey, like take a break, turn the computer off, step away so I can enjoy the time around and that will allow me to just again, embrace the moment and obviously embrace my message as well. Are you competitive much? <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You guys, I mean, the concept of authenticity, like look how authentic she is. Like, and, and this is something that each and every one of us need to embrace. And we talk about it all the time. Like we're all so different. And, you know, we live in a society where a lot of times it's like, no, you shouldn't do it this way. Like this person does it that way. And it's like, no, like you need to do whatever feels right in your heart. Mm -hmm. And that is what will make you shine the brightest. And, you know, I, I love the way that you do this because I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I love Oprah and I study her like religiously and her mentor, Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel hundred percent. Um, so spot on. And it's so true. Like with regards to creating a community and a brand and everything, it's all about how you make people feel. Um, and I love that you do that. So obviously your day is jam packed and it, it, you know, the ladies in the room, you guys know it, uh, because you're all go getters, but like we hear women all the time in society saying, I don't have time to take care of myself. I don't have time to work out like no BS. Like you can't afford not to, you got to make the time. Yeah. And I mean, you guys like are hearing this from another high performer. Like she has so much shit going on, but like taking care of yourself is an absolute must because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. Can we touch a little bit upon that? Yeah, definitely. And I, that's, that's spot on. That's something I've talked to a lot of people. It's like, and Alex and I've talked about it as well. Like if I'm not able to help myself and reach my goals, there's going to be, it's going to be a hard time to help others and reach their goals. But it's, a, it's so spot on where it's like taking care of yourself. Obviously that's important. You got, you have to put yourself as a priority and people are like, Oh, well it's selfish. And not, not always is selfish a bad thing. Being selfish is good because it allows you to put yourself on the forefront or put yourself in that front burner and say, Hey, like, what do I need to do for myself? So then in turn I can help other people. Like I want to help the community. I want to be able to give back. 
our goal of ours in the next three to five years is to be able to create a community center where we can help other people, whether they don't have the means or they do have the means, we can teach them entrepreneurship, learn how to do taxes, learn how to create a business, learn the intricacies of distribution and margins and all that stuff. And it may seem like, oh, it's, that's out there, but it's like, I wish I would have learned that in high school. Like we had, I think, a, a consumer ed class. And like, I think I learned how to balance my checkbook and that was great, but we want to be able to do that. And so to be able to do that, I still have to be able to give back to myself. I still need to be in a space where I'm doing something for myself. And, it, and it's so hard. And it's, I, I can't speak to those that have kids. I praise, I have tons of friends. I have a friend of mine that has four kids and she makes sure she goes to the gym five days a week. She's in Utah. And I'm like, girl, you are crushing it. So anyone out there that has kids or families, like I don't have, obviously I have fa like family, sister, mom, dad, but anyone that's out there that's doing it, like props to you, like give yourself a pat on the back and like, don't hold yourself to the flame where you're like, oh, I'm not doing enough. Like if you can get up and give yourself some special time to yourself, that will help you. That will help your family. That will help you, whatever else you're trying to achieve. And I think physical activity and some sort of exercise is so good for your body and mind that in turn will allow you to not necessarily be better, but it'll allow you to okay, let me focus on these other things because then your mind's not in one spot or like, oh, I need to go do this and I need to go do that. And time management is something I've had to work on. And I think we all have to work on it, obviously at points in our life because there's only 24 hours in the day. And if you're sleeping eight or seven of them, then it's like, what are you going to do with the other time? So it's, uh, it's definitely important, highly important, like put yourself as a priority health and fitness wise. And, it, and it's tough because people out there be like, oh, well, this is, this is what I do that like, this is what I deserve. Like, I don't think you need to put your time there. Like, that's cool, man. But everyone's different. It's just like nutrition. Everyone's different. Like, Hey, here, you shouldn't drink milk. Cause it has a great ratio of protein, fat, carbs. You're like, well, I'm intolerant. And I crap my pants when I drink milk. So I'm not, you shouldn't drink milk. You know, again, that's just a reference or analogy, but I think everyone's so different, but the consistency of saying, Hey, like I am important, give myself that time of day. Um, and again, that selfishness doesn't have to be in a negative connotation. It can be a positive say, I'm doing this for me. So I can in turn help others. Man, I love it so much. And you touched up on so many good things and I'm going to get a little bit sidetracked because <laughs> like this, this is really good. This is really good. Like you guys hear it a lot from us, but it's like even more reaffirming when you hear it from somebody else who is extremely successful. So, you know, Something that I see most women struggling with, and I get it, like we're all like work in progress, like nobody's perfect. And we, each and every one of us needs to embrace ourselves, like based off of where we are right now. Um, but something that I feel like most women struggle with, and that's why they don't show up for themselves is due to two things. For one, identity issues because they've never taken the time to like know themselves. Um, and because of that, they struggle setting boundaries. So they like let everybody like, you know, um, basically like they're there for everybody at all times, but like they don't know how to take care of themselves. That's something that you see often too. Yeah, it's something I've seen. And I've also to kind of use the same kind of like energy, like putting like energy being pulled from other people. Um, I worked with a life coach years ago and we'll still t keep in touch from time to time. But something we talked about one time was a vampire, like energy vampires where they kind of suck your energy from you. And it might be like a really good relationship or friendship that you have. It could be friend, it could be personal, it could be coworkers, but they essentially like kind of suck the energy from you. Like it's exhausting when you're done. You're like, man, usually something I've learned in life and Alex and I've discussed it a lot, like is having mutually beneficial relationships. That doesn't have to be necessarily personal or uh, family, but also in business or sponsors or whatever you're working with, whoever you're working with, it should be a mutually beneficial relationship. And I think that's something where it's like, if you're constantly putting energy out, right. And you're not getting enough energy being put in and you feel depleted and you feel worn down. It's like, all right, there's definitely an imbalance there. So it's a, very important to obviously put yourself as a priority, but it's like, what serves me? Does this relationship serve me? Does this, does this extracurricular activity serve me? Does this meeting serve me? Does something, and obviously certain things may not be controlled. Maybe you're doing meetings that are wasting a time in your day when you could be doing it over the phone for five minutes. Everything's a little bit different, but it's like, what serves me? Does it have a purpose for you? Does it help you reach your goal? If it doesn't, then it's like, maybe it's time to say, 
goodbye or bid adieu to that to say, hey, I need to put my energy somewhere else so that I can redirect that to myself versus putting it elsewhere. And it's very easy to kind of put out and give. And I think women tend to, not everyone, but women tend to be more of the givers and wanting to help others. But if you constantly give, 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 then you have nothing left for yourself. So then you're placed at the bottom barrel. And again, I, I see friends that are moms and like, obviously like you're taking care of a newborn or their kids, the young babies or a teenage kids. And it's like, there's a lot that goes in there, but it's like, if you're not available and you're not able to help yourself, then it's going to be hard to help them. So it's like maybe making something, whether that's time or saying goodbye or closing a door to something to allow yourself more time is really important. And it's hard because I've had to in the past say no to friendships and say no to environments and leave environments to allow myself to be more successful because they weren't conducive to being positive in my growth. And they were literally pulling energy from me and it was not a good environment. So I had to say bye to that to allow myself to grow in a positive way. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's get back to your wine. Okay. So, so the name of your wine company is called the goat wine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does that stand for? So goat stands for greatest of all time. And a lot of people think of greatest of all time as like, People think like maybe Muhammad Ali or Tiger Woods in golf or maybe Tom Brady if you watch football. Um, but obviously there's a big connotation within the sports realm because I've used that a lot. People say Rich Froney was in the CrossFit realm, but it not, doesn't have to be just sports. It could be family, it could be career, it could be just life in general. Like who do you see as the greatest of all time? Could be your mom, could be your dad, could be a brother or sister. And so that was something we wanted to create something unique and different. And obviously we paired it with a goat because it goes kind of hand in hand. Um, but we wanted to create something where it's like, Hey, like if you were going to buy this for yourself or for someone who do you deem or who do you see, see as like the greatest of all time in your life. And so we wanted something different and unique because the way we enter the market wasn't the traditional, like maybe getting a tasting room or doing in-person tastings. It was online direct to consumer. We launched at the games in 2017 in Madison, but it was definitely a different aspect. We're like essentially per, not I mean, sharing wine, but also sharing our story within the fitness realm. And like you said, not many people think like, oh, I'm working towards my fitness goals. I can't drink. I'm not saying you have to drink, but I do. I was like, this is my lifestyle. Like I'm going to share my lifestyle with you and say, hey, I like to have balance in my life. And this is what allows me to have balance. So that was the whole kind of idea behind it. Uh, we have the goat and a, a handful of other labels, but that's the one that we focus and has been most popular. I love it. So speaking of the greatest of all time, I have a question for you and for all of us listening. If you're listening, please type it in the chat box. Um, but who is the greatest of all time person for you? Oh, man. That's a good question. <sighs> I think of all the people, I think it have to be my mom. I think she's someone that has sent a uh, has created a great base for me and always been there to support me no matter what my endeavors, whether it's athletic, business, personal. And she's someone that's always been so positive and endearing. She definitely give, gives a lot more. And I think that's someone that I would have to deem as like the greatest of all time in my life. I love it. I love it. I, I see comments coming in. My I, mom, I awesome. my husband, a lot of parents. That's amazing, you guys. So awesome. You guys are great. This I'm just looking at all the comments now. It's so awesome. A lot of you guys are talking about your family. That's so good. I love it. Um, okay, so what is what is unique about the goat wine? Tell us about it. So we wanted. It, I, I wish I, I have a bottle over there. I'll have to. Want to go it. grab it? Yeah, one it. second. Yeah, hold on. Well, I'm getting to that. Give me the wine. Is it five o'clock yet, you guys? Maybe in Scot, not even in Scotland and England. Where okay. are my wine drinkers at? If you're a Is wine that drinker, if, yeah. If you're a wine drinker, well, if you're a wine drinker, type in the chat box, wind me down, baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell us a little bit about it. All right, so this is this was our original bottle. It's a short, fat, hot, like a hawk bottle. 
Uh, we ended up doing something unique and different. It looks kind of like a small bottle, it looks like a port bottle as well. We wanted something unique and different to kind of grab the attention. If you think of looking at like shelves of wine in distribution or at the wine retail shop, you see traditional style bottles. And so we wanted, when we started, we wanted to say, hey, how can we create something different and new in this new market? So we went with a short fat bottle and then we did wax at the top and obviously with a cork inside, but um, we did wax on top. And again, our labels, we wanted to create something unique and different where it's like, it obviously stands out a lot. So we did a lot less writing like on the back side. There's a little bit of information, but on the front, we wanted to kind of capture people's attention. So we did like the goat kind of highlighted. We worked with our design company in Paso to create something that was gonna pull people's attention. And then you can see obviously like the goat right there. This is our first bottle from 2016. Um, the 2017 vintage, we did the same bottle, same wax, um, same label, changed a little bit of information on the back. And then our 2018 bottle, we did a little bit, a little different. Um, it's a little bit of a taller bottle, higher shoulder, a shorter neck. We ended up going with capsule because the wax at the reeds in like restaurants, the wax can be a little bit of a, um, from one individual that said something, he said it was a little bit of a nuisance because of the wax kind of, it's soft wax. You can go straight through it, but it can crumble easily. So we wanted to streamline it and make it a little easier for not only retail, but also at restaurants and bar tops. So we went with a capsule. Um, but we still want the same label. We ended up splitting the label. So it's a front and back something that's obviously, if you think of like wine, it's, it's a red blend and we focus on blend because blends tend to be, especially for those that may be new wine drinkers, blends can be a little bit easier to drink or start with a blend essentially is two or more grapes, grape varietals, a single varietals, like a Zinfandel or a Cabernet. Um, it's that one grape and that one varietal, but blends are unique because you, when you blend those grapes together, you might have something in one grape that kind of stands out more than the other when the wine. So like, for example, this is a Petit Syrah, Syrah Garnacha blend. And the Garnacha is a softer grape, a lighter wine, but that softens the, the, the kind of strength and the boldness of the Petit Syrah and Syrah. So I'm not sure. I know some people I saw that are drink, that like wine and drink in here. Um, and so for those that maybe know a lot about wine, we wanted to have something that they could enjoy that's bold because more experienced wine drinkers tend to like bolder wine, stronger wines, like a cab. People that are maybe relatively new to cross or cross relatively new to wine drinking, maybe they like lighter wines, maybe they like whites over reds. Um, I think it's all about kind of coming down to what you like and enjoy. Our biggest thing is like you don't have to drink wine, you don't have to have this, you don't have to have that. Like drink, taste. And I know this sounds kind of funny, but like the only way you're gonna figure out what you like is to drink more. Not that I'm saying go crush all the bottles all the time, <laughs> but the best way to kind of find out what you like is to kind of taste and experiment with new wines. So I love going to the store and picking up new wines and new varietals or new mixes and blends. Cause it's like, I just like to learn more of myself, but also I can kind of taste on my palate. Like, hey, can I pick out this grape? Can I pick out this wine? Um, so yeah, so that's the goat. It's, uh, it's something, again, we wanted to create unique and different and just share with people with our work hard wind down message. Our other most popular one, um, I think, I don't think I have it. Up. Actually, I, can you guys hold on one second? I'll grab it. Isn't she great, you guys? Are we loving her? She's awesome. How's everybody's day going? Okay, so here's the other one. This is Cheerston. So this is the one that we dedicated to my sister. This was her, one of her last paintings she did before she passed away. It's called the purple tree. And so uh, obviously we had to do a little bit of work to get it onto the label, but we wanted to dedicate it to her. So we did a little bit of embossing on the purple label on the purple tree. So kind of, as you run your finger across it, it kind of feels raised, but we wanted to dedicate this to her. This is also a blend as well. Um, our earlier versions of it, our earlier vintages, the 2016 and 17, it was uh, Garnacha and Tempranillo. And then this year we went with a Petit Syrah, Syrah, Garnacha and Petit Bordeaux in there. We may go, we may start to put a Tempranillo and Garnacha blend back to Cheerson, but maybe a little more Tempranillo. But we wanted to create a wine that's kind of a little spicy, has a little boldness, but is also super smooth. Um, I think of my sister as definitely someone that was really spicy. She was definitely um, a little more aggressive than I was in some aspects. She was a lot more stubborn than I was, but uh, she was also obviously very super sweet. So that's where we wanted to kind of embody the wine for her to kind of re remember her. And her actually, the reason we ended up spilling it this way, if you guys can kind of see, 
it's cheers dash tin. So it's like her way of describing it was if you took like a glass of wine and she actually had a, a friend of hers shared a story on her Facebook and saying, I remember when you introduced yourself to me, you said your name was Cheerson and you took your glass for it. It was like a red solo cup and she's like, like cheers tin. And so that was something that was really cool. So we use that as part of her story sharing on the wine, just so people kind of kind of get to know who she was. Um, and how she lived. So those have been like the two most popular wines that we have. Man, I love it. So, I mean, obviously these wines come with a story. Like it, it's a part of like who you are and man, it's definitely your baby. I love it. So, I mean, I'm sure a bunch of you guys probably want to grab a bottle or maybe a case. I know Danny Bourne probably wants the case. Where, where can they, where can they grab it? So we have it available on our website, thegoatwine.com. I can put it in the chat too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all the wines available on there. We, uh, we have the wine. We're looking to hopefully do some apparel, some wine shirts here soon. We just got them in. We just haven't put them on the website. But our whole message obviously is that work hard wine down. But some of them, they've been like AM and APM, which is like coffee, weights, and wine. And so we just want to share that message with people. But, uh, but yeah, the goat wine is where we have everything on there. We're not, we're looking, we're hoping to get into distribution in more places. Uh, in the Vegas area, we have it here, uh, the goat in distribution and then Colorado in Boulder and in um, Denver, we have uh, the wine, the goat wine in two local wine shops there. So the goal is to do more. We'd like to get into more distribution. Uh, we'd like to get into Texas. We'd like to get into place, more places in California. It just, it's a, it's a process. It, it, right now it's a team of two, Alex and I. So we kind of like juggle. <laughs> all the things going on right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, you're hustling and you're working it. Um, you guys, I put in the chat box, uh, the website, the goatwine.com. Um, definitely check it out. I know that Aaron and I are going to check it out for sure. So now, um, obviously, I mean, you know, you, you're a student of life and you're amazing at what you do. You're so consistent. Um, you know, you embrace challenges. You have a really good attitude despite of, you know, what goes on in your life. But if you had one piece of advice to give someone about life based off of your experience so far, what would it be? Oh man, that's another good question. I would say one to be accountable, like to your goals, whatever that is, but be patient. So I think that's kind of part of the mantra that I've had, if we've had in training in life. It's like, you got to be accountable to your goals, like whatever that is, and your goals may change through time. And that's totally fine. Mine have evolved. We all evolve as people. Like you said, change is going to happen. It's guaranteed. It's going to come at one point or another. So it's how do you roll with that? How do you adapt with that? but also to be patient and be kind to yourself. Cause I think a lot of us, we want things now and it doesn't help in a society where it's like, you want a new car, you want a new phone, you want a new outfit, you can go and get it. And that's great. But it's also like, Hey, be patient, be kind to yourself, know that it's a process and enjoy the process, but like enjoy the time that it's allowing you to get there because you're going to look back and be like, remember when this happened or remember that happened. So it's tough. Cause there's so much out there. Like I want to say, I'm like, also like, make the most of every moment, enjoy it, like live with minimal regrets. But like, I think that's the, that's what it come down to be accountable and be patient. I love it. Be accountable, be patient, be kind, work hard, wind down. Margo, thank you so much for spending your quiet morning time with us this morning. You guys, thank you so much for joining our conversation as well. Go check out Margo's Wine. You guys are amazing and have yourselves a beautiful day and weekend. Much love. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. <laughs> oh, I love this. That's so awesome. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Margo. Of course. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye.